بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. In the previous video, we took a deeper look at the moral quality of chastity from among the fundamental four moral qualities which describe all aspects of human behavior. As usual, the link to the previous video as well as the book under study is in the description below. In this video, we will continue to learn about the fundamental moral qualities in relation to discarding evil. So let's get started. <laughs> The second quality in relation to discarding evil is integrity and honesty. This again is a natural condition of man and to understand this better, the promised Messiah والسلام, presented the example of a child who does not like to leave the side of his or her mother. It dislikes anything belonging to another so much so that it can only be persuaded uh, with a lot of difficulty to be suckled by a wet nurse. His Holiness explains that when we reflect on this habit of an infant, it becomes very clear that this habit is at the root of all integrity and honesty. He explains that no one can be credited with the quality of integrity unless his heart becomes filled with dislike and hatred for the property of another person, as is the case with a child who is in its natural condition. Now, this habit, however, is only a natural condition which it exhibits involuntarily. It cannot be described or considered as a moral quality since it is not exercised at the proper place and time with the use of reason. Just as an infant cannot be described as religious or trustworthy because of this habit, so also a person who does not exercise this natural habit on its proper occasion cannot be held to possess this moral quality. In this respect, the Holy Quran guides us on all aspects of honesty. Some of these verses I'll present on the screen, which the promised Messiah والسلام, has paraphrased in the following words. Those of you who are likely to leave behind minor children should give no directions by way of testament, which should operate unfairly against the children. Those who consume the substance of orphans unjustly only devour fire into their bellies and shall enter a blazing fire. Do not devour each other's substance through deceit and falsehood, nor offer your wealth as a bribe to the authorities that you may deliberately acquire a part of other people's wealth through injustice. Make over the trusts to those entitled to them. Allah does not love those who are dishonest. Give full measure when you measure out, and weigh out with a true balance. Do not deliver short, and do not go about creating disorder in the land. This means that you should not go about in the land with an evil intent, to commit theft or robbery, or to pick pockets, or to acquire the property of our other people through unlawful means. Then he said, Do not give that which is defective in exchange for that which is good. That is to say, as embezzlement is unlawful, so the sale of defective articles representing them as being good in condition, and the exchange of defective articles in return for good ones, is also unlawful. In short, his Holiness explains that if a person does not possess the quality of integrity in all its aspects, as described by the Holy Quran, he would not be considered honest even if he exhibits honesty in certain matters. The third moral quality in relation to discarding evil is described in Arabic as hudna or hon, which means refraining from inflicting physical pain on anyone and behaving peacefully. The natural impulse corresponding to the moral quality is attachment, which can be quite easily observed in a child or an infant. His Holiness explains that it is obvious that in his natural condition, 
Man is unable, man is not able to conceive of peacefulness or even combat combativeness. The natural condition of attachment becomes a moral quality when a person deliberately makes an effort to become harmless and exercises the quality of peacefulness on its proper, proper occasion and refrains from using it out of place. Paraphrasing some of the verses of the Holy Quran in relation to this, His Holiness states, Try to promote accord between yourselves. Peace is best. When they incline towards peace, do you incline towards it also? The true servants of the Gracious One walk upon the earth in humility, and when they come upon something vain, which might develop into strife, they pass on with dignity. That is to say, they do not start quarrelling over trifles and do not make small matters which do not cause much harm an occasion for discord. The expression vain that is employed in this verse means mischievous utterance of words or doing something which causes little damage and does little harm. Peacefulness means that one should overlook conduct of that type and should act with dignity. But if a person's conduct does real harm to life or property or honour, the moral quality that should come into play in opposition to it is not peacefulness but forbearance, to which we shall revert later. Should anyone behave mischievously towards you, you should try to repel it with peacefulness, whereby he who is your enemy will become your warm friend. In short, peacefulness means overlooking trivial matters of annoyance, which occasion no great harm and are more or less confined. Finally, the fourth moral quality in relation to discarding evil is being courteous or saying good words. His Holiness explains that the natural impulse which is at the root of this moral quality is cheerfulness. For example, before an infant is able to express itself in words, it displays cheerfulness as a substitute for courtesy or courtesy and good talk. Again, this natural condition can be converted to a moral quality when it is utilized on its proper occasion. The verses paraphrased by His Holiness in relation to this quality are as follows. Say to people that which is good. Let not one people deride another people. Happily, they may be better than themselves, nor let one group of women deride another. Happily, the last may be better than the first. Defame not your people, nor call them names. Eschew too much suspicion, also spy not, nor backbite one another. Do not charge anyone with anything of which you have no proof, and remember that the ear and the eye and the heart will all be called to account. Bringing us to the end of today's thus. So far we've learnt about the four fundamental qualities in relation to discarding evil. In the next verse, inshallah, we'll start to learn about the moral qualities in relation to doing good. As mentioned before, I have linked the book under study as well as the previous video in the description below. Click on the bell icon to be automatically notified about future videos that happen on a weekly basis. Make sure to subscribe, like and share this video so that we can enable more people to benefit from the treasures left behind by the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.